Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing an updated surgery video just so I can answer a lot of the questions you guys had because I did get this almost like six months ago and I was supposed to have this video up and I just didn't because I was procrastinating and I wanted it to be good where I could be able to show you like before and after so I was kind of like stalling because it is a little harder of a video to edit but we're here now so I'm gonna answer all the questions that you guys left and show you guys a little bit of my before and afters and if you guys are new here I did get um, chin lipo and buckle fat removal so if you guys are more interested in like the results and how my surgery went and who I went to, the prices, everything like that, then just keep watching. So I'm going to start it off by kind of just cutting to the chase because I feel like this is what a lot of people are wondering. Most of the time when they look up like surgery videos, they're looking more for the cost and kind of who you went to and, and all of that. So my total cost for everything was four thousand dollars which it's never the same anywhere um i also got he also gave me a little bit of a discount for my chin lipo because i didn't have a lot of fat to remove but normally buckle fat starts at three thousand dollars with this specific doctor and then chin lipo also usually starts at three thousand dollars for chin lipo as well um also you can always call the doctor and just like ask you know what their prices start at because it always is going to be different per person um also if you hear that in the back that's my washer and i'm not about to pause it right now if it's annoying i'm, I'm really sorry but yeah so every doctor is different but um most of the time you can call them and they'll usually give you like a price estimate of where it should start um and then for who I went to, I went to Dr. Kirk Lozada here in Philadelphia. I'll leave all of his information down below. He does like facial um, surgeries and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, he was a really good doctor and he followed up. He made sure everything was good with me like the next day. Like he reached out to me and everything. So it wasn't like he just did the surgery and kind of like left me on out of the loop. And he also just like made sure I was okay the entire time. I was awake, by the way. So... Um, no one really asked me like anything about that, but I guess I'll kind of go into detail. Actually, I'm gonna go pause my washer because it's really annoying. So where I was was, um, I, no one really asked, but I feel like a lot of people would like to know like kind of how the process went and everything like that. So basically I went there for a consultation and I kind of told him, you know, what I was looking for and what my other options were and stuff like that. So especially with like the, chin lipo I okay so yeah 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 we'll start with the price and everything like that I just didn't know where I wanted to go with this but all right so I went in there and I wanted chin lipo and I wanted buckle fat removal the two reasons why I wanted both was because I had gotten jaw filler before and I love filler and I love that it can Hey, can we not right now? I've always wanted a sharp side profile and I never had one naturally. I kind of always had just like my jaw and my, stop. My jaw and my neck would kind of just like flow into one as I'll show you guys. I'll just like add pictures as I'm talking when I'm editing. But um, yeah, my side profile was just like all one and like a little bit of a chin enhance. And when I first got my jaw filler, I loved it. But after a while, I kind of felt like it all dissolved very fast. And I hate overdoing filler. And I just know that over the years, I, you know, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be paying so much money to just like keep up with it. And then on top of that, it will end up like I feel like your face just looks puffy if you add a lot of filler. So I wanted something a little bit more permanent. And I was like, you know, I might as well just pay the extra money up front. Um, than just like paying a bunch of times over time for jaw filler. So jaw filler is around like $1,000 or more when I could pay, well, what I thought what I was gonna pay was $3,000 for um, chin lipo. So I was like, I'd rather just pay the $3,000 up front than paying like 
six grand over a year and then having to keep getting it with my chin light bows. All right, this is bad because my camera's gonna start overheating, but I'm just gonna have to take a break. So then for the buckle fat removal, I always had like really chubby cheeks. Not like chubby cheeks, but I kind of had no definition in my face. Like I really just had just a round face and the bottom half of my face was super like chubbier than the rest. So I didn't have like a lot of volume up on this half and I had a lot of volume down here. So I have gotten cheek filler before, but it didn't really do what I wanted it to do. So I really wanted like this cheek definition, not so harsh, but I definitely wanted more definition in my face, like more of a contour um, without makeup. And that is why I chose to get the buckle fat removal. So if you guys don't know what that is, it's just like the little fat pads right here. And so again, I'm not a doctor, so you should probably do more research on it. I'm not exactly sure exactly what it is, but that's just my understanding of it. So that's why I decided to get both of these procedures because I just honestly wanted a sharper jawline that was more permanent. And then I also wanted um, just like more of a structured face, like more definition. Do you plan or have thought about getting any other procedures done in the future? Um, and the answer to that is yes, but not on my face. Honestly, the only other procedure that I'm looking at, looking into is getting my boobs done. That is like the only other thing that I've been going back and forth about. I'm pretty much done with everything on my face other than just touching up my filler and stuff like that. Um, and if you guys are new here and you don't know, I have under eye filler and I have lip filler and some cheek filler as well, just to add a little bit more definition into my face. But other than that, I'm not gonna do anything else to my face. I am happy with everything and the results and I love my face. The only thing that I really am thinking about getting done is my boobs, but obviously if I do do that, I will give you guys a whole video on that. The next question someone asked is, how, did they, how do they do it? And then she also asked if I had thought about getting anything else done. So how they do it is, I think it's different for everybody, honestly, for your pain tolerance or just doctor preference or just, I guess, how much fat you're getting taken out or anything like that. So they, this is how my process went. I went to the doctor's office. They gave me this little pill that, I think it has like ketamine in it, I'm not sure, but it's like a super potent relaxing pill. And it literally made me feel so high, which I have a whole video on me getting it done and everything. So you guys can see like my recovery and all that. I'll link it down below in this video. If you guys wanna watch the whole process. I mean, I didn't record him doing it, but then I went into another room and they basically like gave me, for, so first we did my cheeks. And the first thing that they did was inject something in my jaw which basically numbed everything. It like blocked the nerves in my cheeks. So then they went in with like a little laser cutter, I think, and they cut open. I've like, I don't, I don't even feel them anymore, but I have two incisions. I have one incision on each side and basically they just go into it and they pull the fat out, the little fat pads, which I would show you in this video, but some people might get grossed out, but it's really not that gross. Um, they basically pull the fat out and that is what they pull the fat out and literally sew it back up. It's really that simple. Um, it was honestly so fucking gross. I could smell that the laser like burning my skin and I could feel the fat on my tongue. He put gauze in there so that it didn't happen but because I had watched videos on the procedure before I kind of knew exactly what was going on in my mouth which I wouldn't recommend, honestly. I mean, do your research, definitely do your research. But I like literally watched like videos of people getting the fat out of their mouth. So I knew it was the fat on my tongue. And then also like they're burning the fat off and you're just like tasting it. And it was so gross. Like not to go into too much detail, but it was so gross. And then for the chin lipo, if I remember correctly, he made like a small incision. I have like a little scar. You can't even, you can't even see it anymore. But littlest, tiniest scar 
then they pour this like fluid in and it burns a little bit at first but it goes like all down your neck and it makes it completely numb and then they just go in with this huge long syringe that has like a fat tube in it and they just start jamming it jamming it all over like they're literally just like freaking going ham on my neck and i didn't feel either of them um the numbness started to wear off from my cheeks but i didn't say anything to him which I should have because he could have just given me a pain med but i was in pure agony by the time i left because if you ever ever if you have ever like bitten your cheek while you're eating it hurts a little bit imagine like literally having chunks taken out of your cheek and then sewn back up like it literally felt like that um the medication i was prescribed were percocets uh it was like a specific mix of them i'm not sure but they were basically Percocets and then I didn't finish them. I took them as long as I needed them for and then um, I took them for as long as I needed and then I Switched to like Tylenol and stuff and it was pretty simple. Okay. I'm sorry if it keeps switching like angles and stuff my camera is literally overheating and running out of storage and everything but I also wanted to talk about the recovery process I'm not sure if anybody asked but I'm gonna kind of give you guys a little bit of a guidance on it so i got out of the doctors i think it took about an hour long for both procedures and then i had a chin strap that i had to wear for about a week um but the longer you wear it the better the results are just so that your skin like can snap back into place because it was stretched out a little bit and it's used to having that fat in there um but yeah um, I had to wear that for about a week. Well, no, I had to wear it consistently for three days, but you're supposed to wear it at night for a week. Um, you can go back to work and everything, but I literally looked like a chipmunk after three weeks with the buckle fat. I was just like super swollen right here. It wasn't like crazy swelling where you look out of whack, but I looked like handsome Squidward after, and I just like wasn't about that. So, but it took about maybe like two weeks to finally start seeing a little bit more results, but you really don't see like full results until like three months. But yeah, that's kind of how like the recovery process was. I had about three days where I really had to wear the chin strap all day. So I'd say about three days, you would have to stay away from the gym or three days is like pretty much like how much you would have to take off work. Um, someone asked, Someone asked how long did I have to stay away from the gym? And I really don't know. I think I took about a week off. I think he said about three days, but I'm not sure. I think I stayed away for um, a week. No, he said a week, but I think I went a little early. I'm not gonna lie. I think I went a little early, but I didn't do anything with my arms and stuff that would like affect. I wasn't like laying down and like doing stuff with my abs. I was mostly just doing legs. So. I would say about a week, but uh, I would just ask your doctor. I think he said a week. I really can't remember, um, but I know I ended up doing it earlier than I should have. How many surgeons did you consult with? I only consulted with one surgeon. I <laughs> I had this tendency to like really just like impulsively do things. And I know with surgeries and stuff like that, you shouldn't, but I do my research like so well before I make a consultation that I'm like so confident in the surgeon that I just know, you know, like people have gone to them. I've seen their results. I look at the results. I've looked at the reviews. I see their, you know, their ratings and everything like that. Their previous like awards and all the stuff, but definitely do your research around. Um, but yeah, I, only consulted one person, which you should probably shouldn't do, but you have to pay per consultation. And for me, I'm like, I'm not gonna pay a hundred dollars to a hundred different people. Um, if I can find like a really good one right away. And I knew he was a really good um, plastic surgeon. And I've looked at his Instagram. I've looked at his website. I've looked at his reviews. And you know, when you see a place that has like a lot of information, about what can go wrong. I feel like those are the places you kind of want to go to because they're more aware of 
what can go wrong. They're not just trying to sell you something. They're not just trying to sell you the surgery and act like, you know, they're the best and that they're never gonna have a fuck up, like never gonna have a mess up. But, um, I mean, he doesn't say that he messes up, but you know, he's very educated on what he does and like he literally has videos of the surgeries and stuff like that. And I wasn't going under the knife and I don't know, maybe just don't do what I did. But I just have this like bad habit of like, kind of like if I, if I make my mind up on something, like I have to go do it or I'm just gonna sit there and think about it for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, someone said, are you worried about the aging effects of buccal fat removal they may have? So if you guys don't know, a lot of, there's a lot of misconception on buccal fat removal and how it can make you age faster. There's been a lot of back and forth on it. And I did ask him about that. And he kind of told me um, that he's not taking out so much fat from my face that I won't have any volume. Like I'm not getting Bella Hadid results. I'm not getting crazy results like that. This video is gonna be so choppy, I'm sorry. But basically he was saying um, that, basically he was saying that um, it wouldn't really affect me and it's kind of just like, there hasn't been like that much study on it, I guess. Um, but I don't care. Like I actually don't care at all because I mean, if I lose volume in my face when I'm older, I feel like it's just gonna look better. <laughs> I don't know. I honestly don't know. I can't look into the future, but I don't think that he didn't take out so much fat that I'm gonna have absolutely no volume to lose my face, but like other thing, other people that get way too much out probably will have that issue. I'm just not, I'm not exactly sure, but no, I'm not afraid of the aging effects of it because I don't think that it even had any effects on me at all. I should probably pull this forward. Maybe that will help the sun issue. Do you feel like any other part of your face changed from buckle fat? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I feel like the buckle fat also helped with my jaw as well, but also gave me like a little bit of a heart shape, but it definitely changed like the shape of my face. I feel like instead of like a round face, I now have more of like a heart shape to it. And then obviously like the definition, it made my cheekbones look a lot higher and just, I feel like my face looks so much more lifted now just because it was so heavy on the bottom half of my face and now it's a lot more contoured and evened out throughout my face, if that makes sense. Okay, so this is kind of going back to the doctor and all this stuff, but um, also someone asked, was it covered by insurance or was it out of pocket? This was all out of pocket. Um, it's not a emergency procedure, it is cosmetic, so it's not covered by insurance. It's all out of pocket. Um, but a lot of places have like payment plans and stuff like that, so I think it's pretty attainable if you know you can't afford it like out of pocket. And then someone also said, like, what made me decide on the doctor? And I feel like this is so important because this is also like for filler and stuff, but I also told you not to listen to me about this part. I feel like this is just so important because this is what I look for when I look at doctors and can trust them a little bit more, like make me more confident, is their education on what can go wrong. Like, or if they have videos of them actually doing the procedures and stuff like that, I, I love that. But most of the thing that makes me the most confident in picking a surgeon is them showing what can go wrong and, you know, being like, very transparent on you know what can go wrong and how many people have gone how many people has it happened to in their practice and how it can be resolved and all that stuff just how educated they are really is how i usually pick like a doctor and then also just looking at the results and reading the reviews of actual clients you know if they have like no bad reviews, it's probably a little sketchy unless it's for a good reason, but um, I always look at the bad reviews and see what they're about and they're mostly about like 
if they didn't get the results they will it's it's more of like like if you get chin lipo you know for me when he, i got chin lipo he told me you know you don't have a lot of fat to take out anyway so um i don't know like how well it's gonna work for you so that's why he did it a lot cheaper for me because um like kybella and stuff like that wouldn't have worked but he was very transparent that i may or may not get the results that I'm that is all the questions that i got if you guys do have any other questions definitely leave them down below and i'll answer them i'll definitely answer them down in the comments i'm really good at replying so don't feel like i'm never gonna get back to your comment um because i know a lot of you are probably gonna come across this video and probably aren't from my channel and probably are specifically looking up um videos and questions about the procedures before you get them done so i want to be as transparent as possible i'm also going to leave a bunch of before and after photos for you guys at the end of the video just so you could guide just so you guys can see more of you know what it really did and the difference but i noticed such a big difference in definitely my cheekbones and like my side profile is definitely a lot sharper than it used to be um say hi coco but yeah it was honestly like a super easy surgery i would do it again it wasn't that bad of a recovery process but that is all i have for today so thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and i will see you guys in my next video